and grace and mercy and peace to you from God the Father, from God the Son, and from God the Holy Spirit. Today is a day that we take a few moments and lift up the A ministry of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and the local outpouring of that ministry here at Trinity St. James, and that is the ministry of the Lutheran Women's Missionary Guild, or League, rather, Lutheran Women's Missionary League. The quotes that you see here today are some of the quotes that the ladies made this past year for use not only in this country, but around the world. The quotes are made from donations of fabric and from donations of labor that the ladies put into making them. Now these quotes serve a dual purpose. They provide for folks when they are in difficult situations. And they are a witness of the love of Christ to those people when they are in need. Now we're looking this morning at our epistle reading to the Philippians. What I want to do is right where our reading ends, I want to tack on a couple of verses that follows. Just a few verses after our reading ends, the Holy Spirit through Paul says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, right? Prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Now, if you look at just our epistle reading, and just these verses, and pluck those verses out of context, and read them, it looks like things are going pretty well for Paul. He seems confident, seems like things are going well. Let's take a moment, like we usually do, let's set the context. Set the context to the actual book of, of, uh, of the letter of Philippians itself. Just the context of the letter. To set the context of the letter, we have to back up to Acts chapter 16. And in Acts chapter 16, we find out that when Paul and Silas went to Philippi to preach the gospel, they were arrested for disturbing the peace. They were thrown in prison, and they were given a one-way ticket out of town. As soon as the people found out that they, Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, suddenly they were treated with a little more respect, but not that much respect, because they were still given a one-way ticket out of town. At least this time, the town officials showed up and escorted them to the boat at the dock, waiting to take them out of town. That's the context of the letter to the book, or rather to the church in Philippi. It's also a good idea to look at the context of the life of Paul when the Holy Spirit had him write this letter, especially in light of today being a day that we give thanks for the LWML. What was going on in Paul's life? What was going on when he wrote these words? Let's take a look at just a couple of these verses again. Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I've learned to be content with the circumstances. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Sounds like Paul is having a really good day. Sounds like things are going good for him. He's got the tiger by the tail. He's enjoying his life as a traveling preacher, bringing the good news of Jesus all around the world. But that's not true. In fact, just the opposite is true. Paul wrote this while he was in prison. While he was in prison in Rome. He wrote this while he was under 24-hour guard by two Roman soldiers. He wrote this when he was unable to visit the churches that he started. He was unable to visit his friends. He was unable to leave the confines of the prison that he was in. He wrote this when he was unable to be around any form of support. In fact, the only way he could have contact with anybody is if somebody else took the time to search Paul out and find him. He's cut off, he's alone, he's under constant guard, he's every move scrutinized, and again, no contact with outside people unless they take the time to track him down somewhere in Rome to bring him emotional and physical support. That's the one who wrote 
through the power of the Holy Spirit that he was able to rejoice, that he felt no anxious, he was content and he could face anything that was coming his way. I'm going to imagine, I have to imagine, there were times when Paul didn't always feel this. I have to imagine there were times maybe when Paul said, what is going on? Why is this happening? I've been good. At least since becoming a Christian, I've been good. Why is this happening to me? While I'm here in these circumstances, I'm not doing what I want to do. What if I die today? What if today's the day they put me to death? Am I never again going to be able to meet with people and tell them about Jesus? Now, I'll admit, I'm reading into the text because that's not written in the text, and I'll admit it. So I suppose it's debatable if you ever felt those things, but I do know that almost every other person alive has had these kinds of questions before. Why is this all happening to me? I'm good. I've been good. What's going on? And yet we read in the text that which Paul came to understand for himself through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he wrote for the Christian church at Philippi and for you and me today, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When was the last time you felt like you could do everything? I don't know about any of you, but most days I'm just hoping I can get through the day and doing one thing and doing it adequately, let alone doing everything and doing it well. But again, we need to pause we need to take this all in context of what Paul is saying, in context of what the Holy Spirit is doing in him. And by the way, that same Holy Spirit is here right now. That same Holy Spirit that worked in Paul, that he could write this and feel this, is the same Holy Spirit that's still here today, right now at 9 o'clock, according to this watch. Right here. He's content in the midst of all his trials. He's not being swept away by them. Through the Holy Spirit, he can be content. Through the Holy Spirit, he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. He's not talking about running faster than a speeding locomotive or leaping tall buildings in a single bound. That's not what he's talking about. He's understanding. The Holy Spirit has led him to understand and share with the church in Philippi that he doesn't need the stuff of this world to be happy, to find security. He can be content, he can endure, he can do all things through Christ to give some strength. Here's the thing, here's the thing. When you look at the original language, this is not a passive strength that's being given to him. The word in Greek is, very hard to pronounce, <laughs> the word in Greek is endonamonti. Endonamonti, it almost sounds Italian, endonamonti. It literally means that Christ infuses strength into him. This is a literal Holy Spirit-infused strength, a supernatural God-given contentment that Paul could not get on his own, especially in light of all the circumstances around him. Okay, Pastor, so what? What's that have to do with me today when i got to go face work tomorrow? or in school tomorrow, what, what's, what's the big deal? What's this have to do with you, with me, with the LWML, the Marauder, and so what? Here. From Paul's perspective, or I'm sorry, from the world's perspective, Paul was done. He was under arrest, he couldn't leave the place he was being held. His career as a preacher, teacher, evangelist, traveling apostle was on hold and on hold indefinitely. His access to people was limited, in a sense. He wasn't preaching in temples anymore, but he did have small audiences with those who came to see him, and he had a literal captive audience. See, the two Roman soldiers could not leave him. They were there next to him 24-7. They could not leave him. They could not get away from him. In other words, Paul had small audiences. Small letters to churches, small ministries, but huge impacts. The size didn't matter. The impact, working through the Holy Spirit, is what mattered. Now, for the LWML, 
Probably two of the best things that the LWML are known for are the quilts and the mite boxes. Mite boxes, small cardboard boxes to put spare change into. Little pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters that on their, on their own don't seem like much. They seem pretty small, but when added up, make a huge difference in the lives of many people. Scholarships for students going to Lutheran colleges and seminaries. Quilts, clothing, basic human necessities to people in the United States and all over the world. Food for seminarians and their families in the food banks at both the St. Louis Seminary and the Fort Wayne Seminary. And speaking of seminarians and their families, let me just share with you, there is no broke like seminary student broke. There just, there isn't any, I promise you. The LWML also helps to provide books for seminary students, including yours truly. Little things that add up to a lot, and Don Munti did things. Spirit-infused power into the things of this life that just looking at them just on their own, out of context, may not seem like they're all that special, but when put together, put in context, makes a huge difference. LWML, now, what about you and me? Let me ask you some questions, and I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not looking for an answer. Not looking for someone to jump up and say, ooh, that's me, that's me. You ever wonder if you're making a difference? You ever wonder if you matter? Maybe if you didn't show up tomorrow, no one would notice. No one would care. Anybody ever here just ever not feel like rejoicing? Not feel like praying? Not feel like saying thank you? Anybody here ever struggle with contentment? Anyone here like me and just hope that some days they can just do one thing adequately? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, Paul says. Paraphrase, let's paraphrase that. Yes, life can throw some curveballs, that's for sure. And yes, there are times when I feel blindsided, alone, cut off without hope. But through Christ who infuses me with his strength, by his Holy Spirit, I can endure all things. I can survive and even thrive through all things. Does this sound too good to be true? Too pie in the sky for the here and now? Paul says, I've learned the secret of being content. You know what that secret is? It's living for something greater than the self. It's having our sights set on someone who is above all things. It's a spirit-infused power, the indonamunti of having Jesus guide and direct our lives. No, this does not mean that life is suddenly going to be a bed of roses with no thorns. That's not what it means. What it means is the thorns might not hurt quite as bad as before because we're living for someone else. His name is Jesus. We're living with our lives centered on him and wrapped up in him. We're living as those who have been set free from this by the Son of God through the cross and the empty tomb from the things of this world. And again, it's not that the things of this world are bad. As so often we put more emphasis on the things of this world than we do on our God. They tend to get in between us and our Abba in heaven. We're living as those who understand this world isn't our home. We're living with those who can put into perspective the things of this life in comparison with the eternal life that God gives us through Jesus. We're living as those who understand that we are not made for this world. C.S. Lewis says this, I love this quote, one of my favorite quotes of his, if we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. We're living as those who understand that old hymn, I am but a stranger here. Heaven is my home. Earth is but a desert drear. Heaven is my home. Danger and sorrow stand round me on every hand. Heaven is my fatherland. Heaven is my home. That's how we live. It's how the old WML operates. As ones who meet the needs of life for people, but always pointing them to the real need of the Savior. 
It's how we do, how they do, all they do through Christ who infuses them with strength. It's how we do through that endunamotid strength that we have from the Holy Spirit. Will you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, thank you for the Women's Lutheran Women's Missionary League and the work they do to advance your soul-saving gospel through meeting the basic needs of people in both everyday and extraordinary circumstances. Thank you for your continued blessing of the mites they raise each year. Thank you for these quilts and the labor of love that went into making them. Thank you for those on whose hearts you have laid the desire to serve others. But, Jesus, we have to be honest. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it can be hard when we're sick, when we're struggling in various ways. Sometimes it can be hard when we see others seeming to prosper while we seem to wane. Sometimes it can be hard to wonder if we're really making a difference at all. Lord Jesus, at these times, give us an extra measure of your strength, an extra measure of your Holy Spirit-infused strength, to remember that in your eyes we're more, more than all the created world. In your eyes, we are your children that you think are important enough to die for and rise again for. Help us to never forget your love. Lord Jesus, I pray for all of us here today. Forgive us, renew us, and change us. Let us be different. Be with us as we leave your holy house in just a little bit and go back out into the world where you have placed us to be salt and light. We can do all things through you, Jesus. Help us to not forget it. In your name we pray this. Amen.